make them 10 years before Phantom Menace. But when me and Brandon did the math out, five years after... Five, well, it would make Yodette's, Yodito's birth 10 years before Phantom Menace. But Phantom, when we... Phantom well, Menace was 40 years ago, right? In theory. That's the article I read. However, when me and Brandon did the math, yeah. Phantom Menace was 50 years before the events of this. Correct. So... so I don't know which one is true. I, th- I guess Brandon did the math, so I would actually believe yeah. his more than the other because the other one didn't give any explanation as to how they came up with that number. Right. But uh, either way, you're figuring Mando is from Phantom, but somewhere between Phantom Menace and the next 10 years. Cause maybe he's only 40 years old. Yeah. Which would make more sense than 50, but... I was I was ballparking 30 to 40. Right. Is when I was ballparking, so... so- so you're talking about between the two movie, the two uh, trilogies, then, right? Somewhere in there, late, late, like episode three to episode four, somewhere in there, right? Somewhere, somewhere around that area is what I was thinking, and then um, I'd like to see if they're gonna go into his training somewhere in episodes four through six. We'll say if they actually revisit it, or if they're just gonna leave it at that. They leave it at that. That's fine because it still has that sense of, you know, the uh, the sympathy that Mando right. is, that Mando has. If they if they don't, it's cool. Leave it to be. Maybe they'll save it for season two. Whatever. Yeah, I happen but to think we'll get it in season two. I, I think so as well. So, so now, okay, they proved Brandon and I completely and utterly wrong right off the bat, and Baby Yoda is awake. At the beginning of this episode, which was weird because he was out cold at the end of the last episode. But some time has passed, so now he's awake. And then we, we move forward, and he starts seeing, you know, his 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 past. So he goes back. He's about to fly away, and Baby Yoda was chewing on that little metal top or marble top for one of the, the, the I guess, the acceleration or whatever. And uh, so when he sees that, and he puts it back on. He turns his whole ship off, and he goes back and sees that that little bassinet is in the garbage. Mm-hmm. And that's when he decides to find out what happened. And that's such an awesome scene because he knocks on the door, you know, and that little robot eye comes out, and he just rips it off so they can get the stormtroopers to come out, you know. Um, what I did find interesting was we saw hints of this coming when he first turns Baby Yoda in because what happens is he says, he says to the guy he did the bounty for, he says to him, well, what are you going to do with him? He goes, such so char- uncharacteristic. The commission and the bounty has been paid. That You should forget about this now. you know." And he's basically saying, like, you're not supposed to have a conscience. You're supposed to do your job and then move on. That's why I hired you. I hired you, or the, your guild. I hired them simply because I don't want anyone to talk about this ever again. Yeah, it's... It, it's part of the job to not care but seeing what Mando has to go through to get this child and knowing something about this child is going on is giving him the good conscience to to find out what's happening and to get to the source of the problem absolutely. or to get to at least the source of the information absolutely that was so, one of the best scenes I, I, I love the one of the best scenes of the episode was, Which was that infiltration? Oh, when he's breaking in, yeah. When so now he's breaking he, in. yeah. So now he shoots, he shoots and kills a couple of uh, stormtroopers. What I love the best about this scene, though, is when he gets to the scientist, the one yes. who didn't obviously didn't want Baby Yoda killed. He's like, no, no, if it wasn't for me, he'd be dead already. Please don't hurt me. And Mando believes him. You know, Mando mm-hmm. kind of understands that. Yeah, but I'm still taking the baby. Like, yeah, and. Uh, so he does. He steals Yoda again. But now he pissed off Apollo Creed. And we all know what happens when you piss off Apollo Creed. Yeah, you die in you, the ring. You book another fight. Yes. And that, that's exactly it. And then your 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 guy in the outside never throws in the towel in time. Rocky. You had to get a reason for Rocky to want to fight, right, I guess. But <laughs> I guess this is so. not a podcast about Rocky, because that was a great Rocky. I just, <laughs> I didn't like that Apollo Creed had to die. Um, <laughs> but now maybe I think a little differently because he's clearly a jerk. So. <laughs> but, 
But um, so so now though the guild is going to go after him. Yeah, and they're going to go hard. I mean, they're now Brandon had said it. He said, "Oh, there's going to be a bounty on him by episode four and. I think they're going to announce in episode four that there's a bounty on him. I You could kind of say that this was a bounty on him, and that's why they were all attacking him, but they didn't have their little chips, so they were just fighting him. I don't think there was a bounty officially put on him yet in episode three. However, it was pretty cool when he comes walking back with the baby, and everyone's remote starts going off at once, and that's how they realize Yoda's on, baby Yoda's on his way back. I'm going to go ahead and say that that was a bounty. Uh, in short, probably a short message that he has gone rogue, to use a, another Star Wars term. Um, I, would, I am going to say he has gone rogue, and they got the message. Now that becomes the bounty. that he has crossed the line. Maybe, but I would say that at the moment, they are actually fighting not to bounty for the bounty of Mando, but the bounty of Baby Yoda still. Okay. Let's compromise. I say it's because Mando crossed the line, went rogue, and to get the baby for the for the money. We'll go that route. Well, right. But I think so. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think I'm trying to give Brandon the win here because I think he was yeah. right. No, absolutely. Officially, no, I agree. The I bounty. Agree. That's why they show all the beepers go off because those uh-huh. were all the ones that were given to the guys who were going after Baby Yoda. Mm-hmm. And Mando was the only one that was able to do it, but even he couldn't do it alone. He had the battle droid with him, but he did it. Yeah. And then, but by next episode, they're no longer going to be going after Baby Yoda. Yeah. There's going to be an official bounty strictly on the Mandalorian or Mando, simply to kill him. There's going to be no bring him in alive. It'll be death. No, Brandon is. As, now that you put it that way, Brandon is exactly right. It's almost like he knew what was going on, and. You can almost see for yourself how everything was going to play out. You knew he had to go in, you know, infiltrate the building, get the scientists, get the baby, run out. You knew from the jump of the episode that this baby is essential and that you're not supposed to go against the guild. You're not supposed to go anywhere negative in the guild's eyes. Right. This happens. So this is where we come across. You can almost tell that something's going to happen. And yeah, I, I believe it's going to be, now it's going to be a chase. Yeah, this right. Is, He's going to be on the run the rest of this time. But we've already seen that his tribe is on his side. Correct. Which, that's what I found so interesting. Because now, you're making a distinct, they are making a distinct delineation between the tribe and the guild. Mm-hmm. So that, what Brandon was saying is not all Mandalorians are bounty hunters. You know, but maybe all the foundlings are Mandalorians, but maybe they're not Mandalorians per se. Maybe they're all this tribe of Mandalorians. Right. And even the one guy says that, you know, he grabs, he he wants to pick a fight with Mando and talks about him being a coward because he's working for the Empire, blah, blah, blah. And he's the guy we see come over the wall shooting the first shots in Mando's defense. You know? Yeah, it's almost as if... uh... One could say he's doing it because he's part of the tribe and it's kind of a, a, a brotherhood type thing. I, so I would like to believe because I don't believe that they know what he's what Mando is doing. Though they know he's, I think they know he's part of the guild. But they, I, I don't want to believe that. I want to believe the fact that they're helping each other because they're part of a brotherhood. Well, I think it's um, both. I think so. I think it's it's like any family, right? right? I can pick on my brother or sister, but you can't. Yeah. I can pick a fight with my family member, but if you do, we're against you. Right. And I think they do know Mando is a bounty hunter. And I think that because otherwise they wouldn't know he was working for the Empire. But I also believe that in knowing that he works for the Empire, he now knows that he's stealing Baby Yoda back from the Empire. Right. So to him, he redeemed himself, and he showed that he's not a coward, um, and that maybe he was never a coward, and that this uh, other Mandalorian uh, from his tribe was just wrong. Yeah, I think that's that could be it. You know, it's kind of like you're 
you know, like your typical TV show where the two guys, they're against each other, first couple episodes, whatever, then they find a common ground and they start becoming best friends and this is part of that type of dynamic. Right, absolutely. So, um, and it's not just this guy either. It's the whole tribe shows up. Yeah. Now, the guy, Apollo Creed, I can't remember his name, his real name, so sorry. <sighs> um Carl he, Weathers is his real name, but that's I can't it. There think you of go. The character's name, but I have no idea what the character's name is. But yeah. Carl Weathers disappears, right, and ends up confronting Mando one on one. Right now, what did you think of that scene? You know, we we make the Rocky. <laughs> I think this is the probably the last time we'll we'll make a Rocky distinction, but that was my Rocky scene for me, only because, you know. If you can't get the job right, got to do it yourself. Here he comes out because he's the leader of the guild. He's got to do something. So he takes care of that. Mando goes mano a mano with him, takes him down, or so he thinks. But it's actually one of the credits that saves him, much like the old westerns where they have the metal plate under the poncho. Yeah. Or a deck of cards. Or a deck of cards <laughs> or something. It's like, ooh, this thing saved me. Um, I, I really like that scene. That was the mano a mano. That was the, I give you, I give you life. All right, here's how I looked at it. I give you life. You abuse it. Now I have to take it from you. In a sense. And this is where, and if you can't get anything done right by anybody, you got to do it yourself, right? So he goes out because he knows if he's going to take him out. Mando takes him out, thinks he's dead, takes off. But he gets saved by the by the credit. Now the question is, what's going to be Weathers or Creed's game plan? Is he going to continue to go after or is he going to start putting the bounty out? Yes, that's himself? what I think is happening. Yeah. I think now after this, officially, he's going to put a bounty on Mando. Right. Now, it's interesting because you're right. He does get saved by the credits, the Empire credits in his um, inside pocket. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's Chekhov's Empire credits. Because <laughs> he's like, you made me rich, too. And he shows him the two and then yeah. puts them back away. And those are the things that save him. So now that's literally the only reason why they showed it to us earlier about him being rich. Yeah. Was so that when they saved him, we weren't like, oh, come on. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> I, it's, you know, again, you, you see a lot of classic uh, classic scenes that you've seen over and over in a lot of TV shows, a lot of movies, and this is where I think, you know, you, you wouldn't guess it, but it actually happens. Whether it's a goof, whether it's someone who plays an homage to an old-type Western, because basically it's what it is. You you know, the planet is a desert. So it's kind of like the Wild West. You know, you have uh, uh, the black hats and the white hats, you know, um, and who goes out for what. And that's what it looks And that's that's what it came to me as. It looks like it was like the Wild West that people are fighting for control. Yeah, well, I think that's what they're looking for in general, a feel for this series, because we know that it happens five years after um, Jedi. Which means the Republic is in charge, and the Republic never had control of the Outer Rims. Yeah. Like, the Outer Reaches were just a Wild West. And this is before the the First Order, so they don't have control of it. And really, that area of space, we've always been led to believe, from Episode 4 on, has sort of been the Wild West of space. It was There was really no law. The Empire really didn't have control of it. The Republic never really had control of it. You know, it was it was always kind of left up to its own devices in that way. I mean, was there law technically, but it wasn't enforceable most of the time. That's why it was the most villainous scum in the universe. You know, I mean, this is we're still in that area of space now. So it's only worse now because the Republic has even less control than the Empire had. Right. Yeah, and absolutely uh, true. yeah, I mean. It's great, the Republic won, woohoo! But they, they were weaker than the Empire was at its in, in its height. Yeah. In terms of influence. And so we are in the Wild West of space, but it's the Wild West. And yes, this they do give us 
deserts for all these planets, maybe probably for that reason. They, but they don't have to. 